So cement is a product as vital as, as electricity for our day-to-day -day lives. So the Romans started using cement 2,000 years ago um, when they built structures that are still around today. So they used um, mixing lime and volcanic ash to create their cement. Portland cement was invented in, in the 19th century for our lighthouses on coastal regions. By the mid 20th century, it quickly became the most vital structural material on the planet. And today, the demand for cement is 4 billion tonnes annually, and this is actually expected to grow by 75% by 2050. So right now, cement emissions are 8% of the whole world's greenhouse gas emissions. At the same time though, the world is aiming to reach 0% by 2050. So at the same time, as our buildings improve and our electricity grid becomes much more green with new renewable energy, our glazing specs improve, our, our building code improves, the whole operational energy is expected to decrease. And as operational energy impacts decrease, then the proportion that is embodied energy uh, of our buildings is going to increase. So the spotlight is going to continually and increasingly be put onto cement. So there are huge opportunities if you know how to reduce the embodied emissions of our designs and cement is one of the big players. So the production of Portland cement has actually changed very little since its invention. So step one. So first you need to get the raw materials and the virgin raw materials are limestone and clay. So this is transported from the quarry to the cement manufacturing site. Step two. So now the materials are ground, crushed and blended for further processing. Step three. So this is where the reaction and all the associated emissions come through. So the limestone, which is calcium carbonate, clay and sand are collected and ground up and heated together at 1450 degrees Celsius. So this is used to create clinker. So in this reaction, the calcium carbonate, which I mentioned earlier, which is limestone, this releases carbon dioxide to form calcium oxide, which is lime. So in this reaction, 50% of the carbon dioxide is released in the formation of uh, limestone to create lime plus carbon dioxide. 40% of the emissions are associated in the heating of the kiln and 10% is associated with grounding and transport. So in this reaction, there is a minimum theoretical energy requirement of 1.8 gillijoules per tonne. And today's best practice is already at 2.9 gillijoules per tonne. But most, mostly around the world, it is 4.7 to 5.5 gillijoules per ton. So we can't expect a huge further improvement. We can expect some improvement, but not enough that probably we need to by 2050 to get it to zero emissions. So that's step three in the materials reaction. Now step four, the clinker is cooled by air and ground with a little bit of gypsum. So that's how you make cement. So next part of concrete is the aggregate. Normal concrete is about 72 to 82% aggregate by mass, and this is made up of gravel and sand. So this is produced by crushing qu quarry rock, boulders, cobbles, or large size gravel. So this actually has low embodied en energies associated with it, but their removal can sometimes damage the surrounding habitats. And also, of course, any aggregate not sourced locally has a large or some kind of energy component. So when, when aggregate is mixed together with the dry Portland cement and water, mixture forms a fluid slurry, slurry that is easily poured and molded into shape. The cement then reacts chemically with water and other ingredients to form a hard matrix that binds the materials together in a durable stone-like material that has many uses that we know as concrete today.